Recording is on. Okay, so recently I tried pulling in a lot of the work that you did with the authentication workflow, mm -hmm. the, the Pixie GitLab OAuth workflow. And I tried to pull into a base plenty project to see if I can get things working there. Uh, I don't have it 100% working, but I was hoping to just kind of maybe step through the code kind of line, more or less line by line, um, just so I can get an understanding of different things there. Um, and I'm sure you can clear a lot of uh, some simple concepts up for me. I haven't had a ton of time to, to really formulate my thoughts, so it might be a little all over the place, but I figure we could just okay. kind of go through at a top level. Um, we may not cover all of it today, but just get a couple things um, figured out and then we can go from there. Does that sound and, good? Yeah, and for a side note, I, mm -hmm. for the refactoring, I also did refactoring for the authentication workflow. Okay. So I have a, a new version in the Dino branch. <laughs> Okay, so I'm probably using the old stuff. So may maybe we can go through and, and take a look there. And yeah. um, and then it's I've, now, I've actually... Now, now class and it's easier to use. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think, yeah, a lot of the stuff right now, I'm just kind of like roughly throwing together. And I have a lot of um, kind of broken code in there too. I'm not... Mm. We'll, we'll clear it all up. Let's, let's just yeah. um, take a look maybe and see if we can get some understanding. I'm going to share my screen. I think that's probably the easiest way to do this. Um, so I'm sharing. Now I've done a couple things. So um, I think, you know, or originally basically, so this is a fork of your repository where we have the, the basic code in there. Mm -hmm. I had set it up another repository on GitHub uh, that's slightly different. So this is my, you know, plain CMS is your fork. Um, mm -hmm. And then this is uh, another repository that I created that I was using originally. And then I decided, well, we should really be doing this <clears throat> probably in GitLab since that's where we're authenticating to. Mm -hmm. So I, I uh, made another um, repository. Basically, I, I, I created another remote branch. I started pushing up to GitHub. I can add you to this project. Do you have a GitLab account right now, Jesse? Or do you I have, have yeah. Okay. Um, do you want me to just add you right now? Maybe that makes sense. Uh, sure. Let's see. Why not? Yeah. Uh, it's on, I'm trying to think of where I, okay. Members, they, they changed this around at one point. Okay. Um, and what is your username? Uh, you want to chat it to me? Probably something like Jaws. Wait a second. GitLab. Can you search with email? Yeah. Sure. Do you, uh, I don't know if you. I don't know if you can. I don't think I'm, I have your email exposed. In it. I think I need your username. We can set this up later if you don't yeah, have but it. Yeah, it says in the form GitLab member or email address. Oh, it does. Okay. Um, in the form label, field label. But okay. You can edit this part out or something if you want. Yeah. Well, let's let's do it. We'll do that later. I, that, that way, I don't have to do any editing. Let's we'll do that yeah. afterwards. Um, so basically, I'll add it to this project, um, and then uh, we can work off of this. I think this is kind of, this has some more up to date stuff in it. Um, another thing I did. So basically, uh, you know, since you 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 created this workflow, but you you typically need um, an OAuth application in here. So you can create one of those under a user account. You can actually also create one of those at the group level. So you can kind of come to your, your main group. Mm. I, I created a group called Static Sites um, where I, I did some other testing for um, some Netlify CMS stuff way back. Um, but basically I put this, this repository in here um, and then in the settings. So um, under the gear icon here, I believe it's under applications. Yep. Um, you can create uh, <clears throat> new uh, OAuth apps. So I created this uh, plenty Git CMS one. And basically I just gave it a full API scope um, uh, and then I set a, a redirect URL to, to my local um, for now. And uh, yeah, and I named it that. So, so that's set up there. And, and I think the way that will work is basically if multiple members are added to this, we can all kind of use this shared group application versus having all of us create individual OAuth mm -hmm. apps. Does that make sense with how you think that would work? Um, yeah, yeah. So you can, I think you can create per project application also. Oh, can you? Oh, that'd be even better. I, I, I don't actually know, but I've used only the user application. Yeah, I, so I used the user one at first and that seemed to go okay. And then I, I figured, okay, well, how can we extrapolate this so we don't have to make every person who signs up for you know mm. into one of these repositories? I think it'd be awesome to be able to do it at a per project basis. I wasn't sure if that was possible. Um, I didn't see in the documentation, so I think you might have to do it at the group can you, level. But uh, can you yeah. uh, expand the sidebar from the sure. bottom? Is there an application? 
when I was looking through their documentation too, because I yeah. I saw that. I don't think they I don't think they allow that right now. That might be something to follow up on. There might be an issue or something open for it, but it looked like they had the, the user and then the group. But for now, I mean, mm. it'll be fine for now. Uh, I, ideally, I think you could do it on a per project basis, but um, I don't know. For now, this will work. Um, so I, so I think it should be something that you implement and then forgot, forget. Mm, mm -hmm. It should be something that you will con continually configure, configure and set up differently and so on. Yeah, it should be a one time thing to do. Exactly. That's what I'm hoping. And that, and that, you know, if you have to do it on a per user basis, obviously, yeah. that'd be different, right? Like every user that you're adding, you have to kind of explain that. Um, and that, that becomes a hurdle for non technical users. So, so yeah, I think I mean, at the group level, it'll work for now. I, in the future, maybe a per yeah. project level would be great. But okay, so I think that's working. Um, and then basically, uh, let me pull up my code repository here. So I started pulling um, all this uh, information into uh, a basic plenty project. Let me just kind of show the folder structure here. So um, what I've done for now, and again, this is none of this is final. <clears throat> I'm just trying to get some basic things working, but I created a new content type uh, called admin. Um, mm -hmm. And it's right now it's just an empty file. So it's, this is just a placeholder for routing purposes. Um, and so this corresponds to a route uh, admin that's felt. Um, and I don't, let me see, did I do a node override? No, I didn't. So basically, yeah, the, the route here is just, um, admin, uh, and if you go to that, we can get some basic uh, entry point kind of uh, information for our CMS. Then I also created a CMS folder here, um, and this is where I, I started doing some of the other stuff. So I pulled out basically all the auth information into um, one Svelte file, then I know there's some storage and session yeah. information, and I, and I left those separately um, as well. And then I, I basically put these all into um, modules so you, you basically can get the code without having, because uh, you know, you're pulling the code out of us, uh, uh, a Svelte file, right? So, so typically, if you want to be able to export your your code without having like HTML um, and components, you, you would set the context to module, and that way you can kind of pull in these functions from other Svelte files, right? So, so that's what we're doing here with all these. They're all just set up as individual modules, so you can kind of share the code between them. Um, another kind of so I've done a couple of things. So here, here's the app ID. So I've hard coded this for now. Obviously, I think we'll want to pull this stuff out into some kind of configuration file. Um, I was doing a little research on like how sensitive uh, are these app IDs. I, I think you know they're they're basically since the public ID I think is is similar to like a username as far as I can tell. Is that kind of your understanding as well? Is that something that's yeah? It's so it's probably a globally unique ID of of the app. I, not obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um. So it's. Yeah, it's probably just like like a user in the system. Yeah, it works like a user that this one, has specific this, rights, and but it cannot belong to a group. Probably, it's multiple groups, at least. Yeah, I assume. Yeah, I think it's yeah unique to what. So I think this will be group wide in this case. Yeah. But I'm just thinking, like you know, in terms of. So even if we pull this into a configuration, eventually this gets exposed client side, right? So like a, a malicious actor will see this, and I'm I'm like yeah. trying to think like, well, how? My, my understanding from from what I was looking at um, is that that's kind of expected, um, but maybe something you want to be careful. So I, I was just like looking you just around have here. To turn off the confidential uh, checkbox, then you can expose the okay app ID. Oh, interesting. Okay, so that yeah, I saw that here. So so this you want to uncheck. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Ah. Okay. And it will only for comp. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Good. Good to know. So when creating that, we have to make sure that's unchecked. That's good to know. Um, so yeah. So yeah. Basically, this is just what I was looking at there. Um, great. So I think you know. Obviously, hard coding it into this template is not our ultimate goal, but for now, it's just easy to get it working. Mm -hmm. um, and another uh, a refactor I had to do just because of a plenty bug um, is basically um, plenty right now has this bug. It's kind of been in there for a while. I just haven't thought about. Fixing it, um, it can't take template literal strings right now. So you can't use oh. back ticks in your template. It'll just it'll just break it. Um, it's an annoying little bug that that pops up all the time because that's a pretty popular thing to do in JavaScript. Uh, mm. Not a huge deal. I just basically refigured reconfigured these to be regular strings where I'm just adding the pieces together, right? Instead of doing a template yep. literal with replacements. Um, so that's what that is there. Um, I also, you know, I. I I, I simplified some of these things just to make it easier for my understanding at the time. So I just basically made settings just a simple object. I pulled the, the redirect URL out there and I, I put it in here like this. Um, and I think most of the rest of this is 
pretty much the same at this point. Um, now, I think let's just take a look at um, kind of the workflow here. And I think maybe uh, we can we can go from there. So I think basically um, what's happening on this uh, off, let me see, oh, admin. Okay, so this is, um, sorry. So the admin is kind of the entry point here and that corresponds over on a Plenty project to something like this. So this is a, a basic Plenty project I have running. Um, I go to the login page. So this is the admin route here. So this is the route we're talking about when we're over here in the admin uh, template. And then I'm basically pulling in the authenticate from CMS. And then I have, this is all broken. Don't worry about what's going on here. This is mostly broken, but essentially um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm getting the parameters here. Um, they're, they're initialized to being blank. Um, and then I try to get them from the URL. Uh, which won't happen until we already go through the first part of the authentication, as far as I can tell. Um, yep. And then basically, you I think previously you had like a self-calling um, call to authenticate because it, you have to call it multiple times. The first time uh, through here, I think essentially what happens is these are not set. So you, you do not enter this if statement. Instead, you go to the else down here and you run the start, I believe. Is that? Yeah. So the authenticate function worked as a guard in the original application. Okay. So it, it guarded that you could, could not execute any other code except the authentication until you have authenticated. Okay. And is that, and now that's a little bit different now, is that um, in the reconfigured or is it similar? Yeah, so it returns if it's authenticated. Uh, okay. And the boolean okay and the, it seems similar currently what you're showing okay um great so so my understanding is so again so right now um the way i have it again a difference that we have here is uh you have to call login by clicking that button versus i think uh -huh. you, you know yours and I, this is just um i was just playing with some stuff but for now i think it'll, it'll slow down the process you were doing self-calling so it actually this process would happen a little more seamlessly like on the redirects mm -hmm. and stuff let me show you kind of what's happening right now um and then maybe we can take a look at um kind of the workflow here so um starting here uh, we have this uh block here um I have an object, so basically, I think somewhere I can't remember what I'm doing, but I'm printing out the the code and the state uh, parameters, which would be coming from the URL query string here. Um, they're they're null right now because there's nothing there. Um, and basically, I, I click login. That will uh, that will run my auth my login function here, and it'll run the authenticate. That should come down here. That should fire the start, which will bring us mm -hmm. up. Uh, here and it will generate a, a basic string. We'll set our GitLab state and our, our, our GitLab code verifier, um, and then we'll we'll run this. So let's just take a look at what that is. So first of all, in my application, you can see over here, we don't have any keys or values or anything, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I'm gonna come over here, I'm going to run login. That's going to go to GitLab. It's going to redirect. I'll just put in a username, a password. Um, that'll take me to uh, this authorization screen. So we have this OAuth app on our group level. I'm a member of that group, so I have the ability to choose to authorize to it. Um, that redirects me. And now we have uh, that object printing out with our code in our state. So it's basically getting the values from this query string here. We have our code here, um, our state here. And then um, in our uh, saved values here, we have our plenty CMS state and our code verifier. Now, um, I believe this, like at this point you would, your system would automatically kind of try to run uh, the authenticate again. Yeah. Um, and it would- If it takes the parameters in the URL, it will run the authentication again. Yeah, and then basically it would get these and then this time it would try to run capture, right? So yeah. um, in my case, I have to run that manually because it, I'm not self-calling. So I'll, I'll, I would just click this again. That tries to run capture and this is where I, I start getting some errors. And again, I haven't really mm -hmm. spent a lot of time doing this. So I, I changed certain things. So that might be, part of the problem here. Um, but I, I, so I try to do this uh, and I'm getting the client authentication fail due to unknown client. Um, oh, yeah. It's because of the redirect URL. It cannot be localhost. It's uh, oh. it's enforced by GitLab that it can be localhost. Oh, it's just a public facing URL. Must be a real URL. URL. OK, OK. Well, that's good to know. Um, so, so yeah, that might solve that problem. 
Um, okay, so let's just, I kind of want to just go for understanding, right? But, to, to... Yeah, the error is quite, <laughs> I vague. don't know what the error is. Yeah. I, I saw this error several different times. <laughs> I saw I saw it before when I was trying to get the the, the start function working. I saw it and then the capture. It's not very clear. I feel like it's their catch all. Uh -huh. Like something went it's, wrong. It's probably if it's not confidential uh, application. Then if it's if it is a confidential application, this error comes because it doesn't super fix the authentication. The GitLab API. Oh, oh, sorry, because I, so maybe I didn't choose the right. Sorry, because I chose it as confidential. This is what I'm getting. Yeah, yeah I, I think I did choose it as confidential. I don't and I don't have an intermediary server. So I assume that might be part of the problem, you think? Yeah, I think so. Because mm -hmm. it has to be non-confidential, the application ideas. Uh -huh. so, so I should check this then. Yeah. And, and then the other problem is the redirect to URL. Uh -huh. And it, it definitely won't work with a local, you don't think? I I tested so that it shouldn't work, but mm -hmm. we can try it again. Yeah. Okay. Let me um, let me try that. That's good to know. I can just start this over. I guess. Just to clear. Uh, local host. And I don't know if it takes a second for the authorization to work anyways, but let's, um, let's see. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, oh, and this is different now. Mm. The provided authorization grant is invalid, expired or revoked, does not match. Um, so that's a different error though, right? Yeah, um, it is different, yeah. Okay, um, okay. well that, that's at least starting to get helpful. This is less vague, I think, so that, that's good to know. Um, okay. Do, do you mind? Um, we, I can debug some of this later. I don't want to spend all the time on the call. Do you just, should we go through some more of this just for understanding? I think, um, does that work? Uh, go through some more of this code. Um, let's, uh, go through the code. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, um, let's, let's, I'm going to go back again. So let's go through the first time we're going through here. Right. So, um, the first time we come through here, these things, these things are blank. Um, these parameters are, are, are blank as well. Um, so we, we come here, we run start. Um, we come up here, let's just kind of do this slowly. Okay, so we generate a string. So this string generate is basically, you have the alphabet here in lowercase, you have the alphabet repeating again in uppercase, and then you have the numbers. And I think basically what we're doing is we're, we're, we're creating random values from that, and then we're hashing them with, uh, oh, not yet, not yet, but um, not yet. It's we're creating... Crypto, cryptographically random uh, yeah. string. So okay. it's using the crypto API of JavaScript. Okay, perfect. I did, um, so I was having trouble with the regex that was in here. I think it was in, oh, maybe it's down here in the hashing part. So I had to, re I removed that yeah. and that might also be part of our problem here. But so, okay, so we created yeah, a random. Probably, yeah. Okay, so first we create a random string. Basically we feed it some input that it can use to create that string um, with characters that we allow and then, uh, we, we, we create that random uh, string and we return it, right? Um, yeah. From there, we do a session set. So basically session is, we're getting session from our uh, session Store, template here. Yeah. Yep, exactly here. And so this is basically a class where we can uh, set some information. And that's basically where I believe we are over here setting our sessions over here. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so basically, so this first part is the, the plenty CMS is where we're hard coding this here. And then the key is coming in from what we're saying. Yeah. yeah, perfect. And that's that's the other part of this here. And that's how we create those. Okay. Yeah. Um, and great. It's encoded to use JSON because uh, it's easier to store and load anything with JSON. Okay. Anything, anything like that's. Uh, we are able to encode with JSON. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. So like objects and uh, arrays and str also strings and booleans and null and so on. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, another, another quick modification. So it's weird. I don't know if it's um, spelt, but I, I couldn't have private methods. So this used to be 
oh. a, a private method. It was, it was throwing errors, so I just yeah. got rid of it. It's public now. I don't think it's the, the end of the world, but um, it's not, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so so we store that uh, back over here in uh, auth. So so we set the GitLab state. Then we generate um, a code verifier string in the, much the same way that we generated the first string. Mm. Um, and then we set that as well. And that is our other value set over here. Um, yep. And then we come down, uh, we get the setting. So basically we just destructure, I, I have a simple settings object here, um, getting that we're going to GitLab, that we have a redirect URL and an app ID. So we, we just basically pull those values out right here. Um, and then we create this basically uh, URL uh, request here. So this uh, it makes sure that we're going to uh, GitLab uh, at this URL here, and then we're passing all this information. So um, we're we're setting up uh, our, our client ID. This is our OAuth um, ID that we have. We have a redirect yeah, okay. URL. Yeah. The this is our local host currently, which might be our problem. Um, and then we're saying that we want this to be a a uh, response type of code. Now, I believe this is where kind of the code checking stuff comes in. So there's a code challenge. Um, and and yeah. basically, this is what you're talking about before when we're talking, right? So basically, you have to, this is a, a verification step, I, I believe, or I haven't looked into this too much, but I assume that somehow this is checking that we know that we have the same hashed string on both our, our client application and in, in the GitLab. Is that? Yes. That yeah. So it doesn't. Uh send the code verifier, it's stored locally. Mm -hmm. It just sends the hashed version of it called gotcha. code challenge. And uh, the return returning request must also return the code some some version of the code challenge. I, I don't remember, but we check against it with the with the original code verifier. Oh okay. So, Ensure that the returning request is the same with with the same the same as we made to uh -huh. the GitLab. That makes sense. With okay, so we so we basically create a string, we hash it, we send the hash version, or, it, or was it actually state does that also? Hmm. hmm. Code challenge. I don't actually remember how it how it yeah. fully works. <laughs> yeah, no, I know it's kind of confusing, but it looks like the challenge here is the hash version, right? Because code challenge yeah. is is hashed. hashed. Yeah. Um. Okay, maybe I'm going getting a little ahead again. So so when we run this hash, uh, we're, we're hashing it up here, right? So we're we're yeah. um, uh, we're basically trying to uh, SHA two fifty six it. Um, mm -hmm. I did so down here. Um, I did remove those that regex, which I, I looked like it was trying to convert maybe spaces into hyphens or uh, mm -hmm. uh, and then forward slashes into underscores. Was that? Yes. It re requires step because of how the format of hash that the GitLab wants. It wants URL URL uh, safe hashes. Okay. And it's the only only. Uh, way to make hashes safe, URL safe uh, with JavaScript is by regexing the st stuff, the, some characters to different characters. Okay. Now, so I'm curious though. So since we're we're feeding like it from a, a string that we already specify the characters, yeah. is is that necessary? Uh, the hash creates different characters. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Characters. Okay. So we get it. So basically we get the hash, which can have forward slashes and underscores, and then we have to yeah. make it safe. Yeah. We have to make it so that uh -huh. it can be used and as URL as is. Uh-huh. Okay. It's okay. The, we could also encode it with URL, in, uh, encode URL component, but uh, it wouldn't work with GitLab because GitLab wants once it is in specific format. Okay, interesting. Okay, so I'll probably have to figure out what was going on with that regex and then put it yeah. back in here. I don't know if that's a plenty specific thing or or, or whatever. Um, okay, so so that's good to know that that what that's doing. And then I guess I'm kind of curious. So at some point we have to match string, right? So I'm, I'm guess I, and I, again I think this is where we're, we're not we're a little turned around, but the the hash string we send and then they send it back. And then we match it. I, I guess I'm confused there, but yeah. We can... Look at the capture. Okay. 
Okay. Let me, um, before we do, let me, so yeah. just kind of for, for my own understanding and people who maybe watch this. Um, okay. So we run the start, we, we do all this, right? Um, and, and then, so basically this, this redirects us to this GitLab URL, right? Um, that's where we do the authorization and then it sends us back. And, and then presumably over here, um, authenticate would run again. In our case, we have to click the button, not, not a big deal. Um, the second time it runs, um, we come down here. Uh, this time we have these, we're able to get these out of our sessions in our storage, right? Mm -hmm. um, we, we have the parameters that we're getting uh, over here. Um, this time we're getting these from the URL and this is kind of a, a plenty helper code that I just added. So uh, just, a, just an aside, plenty actually was having trouble with uh, query parameters before. So I did a, a, a new release last night that should fix that. Um, so those should work. Uh, we, we get these with our special params um, uh, uh, magic prop here. Um, and then once those are set, basically we say, okay, we have the code in the state and the state presumably uh, uh, from the uh, this here in our URL, uh, wherever it is, I don't know where state starts, somewhere, somewhere here. Um, wherever it starts, um, state from that URL matches the state that we have in storage, which we, we get up here, which is the state over here. Those two things have to match, right? That's kind of what we're, we're doing here, matching those. The state works as a nuance. Sorry, so, what's it? Nuance. Eli, so there's, it's a value that should not repeat mm. after this. Okay, it yeah, it gets created individually. A, yeah. As a unique request. Makes sense. Okay. And that's when we, we're basically, every time we generate, we're creating that unique state, yeah. right? Okay. Um, great. So then, so then we fire capture this time and now I'm, I'm directly passing those parameters. I'm just doing it a little differently here. So we're passing those parameters. Um, and so we come up here and we are in the capture. Um, and this is kind of about as far as I get, cause this is where I was getting the errors, right? So again, we're getting, <laughs> sorry, my cat wants to be fed so bad. She gets <laughs> so mad. Um, okay. So then again, I destructure those settings. So the same settings we had before, we're getting the, you know, GitLab, the, the local redirect URL and our, our, um, OAuth app ID here. Um, and then we come down here and we are getting our code verifier. So this is kind of, uh, okay. Oh, yeah. So we have, oh, I'm interested here. Hmm. The code, so, uh, code challenge is, is, um, it's going to be saved in the GitLab servers. And when we capture the request coming from GitLab, uh -huh. then we send, send it in a, another request with, with fetch to the GitLab server. So the, uh, with the code that we received from there. The <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <my God. laughs> okay. All right. So, um, okay. And so they verify that it's, it's the same as the hash that they got before. Oh, so we send another request to them and they verify. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when we get the uh, access token in here, the capture. Ah, uh, okay. Um, perfect. Oh, so so I'm gonna do this real slow again. So so at this stage here, we do um, our get, which we get out of our code verifier. So we get this value here, mm -hmm. right? And then we make this, we create this other um, fetch request here. Uh, again, to basically the same URL here, um, same client ID. Uh, uh, this time we have our code, which they return to us, which we got from, this is a value that they return, right? This code yeah, value. Um, so we give them that this time. And I don't know this code value. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's something that they're creating or is this, it must be. It's something that they are creating. Yeah. Okay. It's for, it's a token to get the tokens. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One token to rule them all. Yeah. Um, Okay, so we get the code verifier, that, that value, which we get from our our, uh, our query parameter that GitLab returned. We put it back in this new request. Um, we say that the grant type now is authorization code. So they, and I assume that means, so they can check it this time is what we're telling them. Um, we set our redirect URL the same way much we did before. Our code verifier is our unhashed version. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we send our unhashed version of the code verifier, right? Because we're getting this from our local uh, storage, which we yeah. did before we hashed it. And then we post it to them, right? Okay. Yeah. And then what we do is we try to get the JSON response from that request and we throw off, we have errors, which looks like we're getting right now, but that's probably because of the local URL, right? That's probably what we're thinking there. Um, uh, it's 
probably the regex that you are missing. Mm, okay. Oh, okay. Because they're not getting a safe URL. Okay. So we need to fix that regex so they can get a safe URL. So that might be part of what's going on there. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And then when we get it, that's when we start setting our GitLab token, right? That's where we do a storage yeah. set, um, which we come up to here and in much the same way that we did this before. Um, this time, you know, we'd set it, uh, sorry, we'd set this with GitLab tokens, and that would give us another um, value in here that's called plenty CMS GitLab tokens, right? Is that what yep. we're thinking? Okay. So that's, we're not getting to that state. Okay, but that makes sense. Um, and, and then uh, uh, then basically are we um, doing a redirect here? What, what's happening here with this? Yeah, it's replacing the URL so that mm -hmm. it doesn't include all the post parameters, the gotcha. get parameters. So it basically gets rid of all this. Now, yeah. the, the new version yeah. of this that yeah, will happen after. Right. Yeah, okay. Um, awesome, so that makes sense. And then I assume, now uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, so I have a little bit of fixing to do before I get there, but I assume what happens next is Authenticate would typically run a third time. Is that correct? Because um, I'm curious yeah. where, re or I'm Actually, curious what no, refresh yeah. is. Actually, no. It, oh. After the capture, it all, it returns true and oh. it allows the application to run. Gotcha. So refresh is if your token has expired or something, and it has, and yeah. you're not able to capture. If it's expired token, it it will refresh it using the refresh to token. And gotcha. Also, so requesting another to access token. Okay, and so refresh is doing. But how does refresh in, work? In this version, the refresh was broken actually. Oh, okay. There was okay. Missing variables. Yeah, it doesn't get the server and app ID variables here. Ah, uh -huh. okay. So this needs to be reconfigured anyways. Yeah, it's it's now fixed in the okay. Dino version. Okay, so so I'll look to that. Maybe we can pull some of that in yeah. um, in there. Um, and okay, so I guess I'm thinking, so, so that's if some, I'm trying to think of when the, the refresh happens normally. That, so basically if it's like, hey, you're no longer, logged in we need to we need to refresh you and then it it, it yeah. does there's a there's a time when the access is access token is valid mm -hmm. time span. Um, yep. after it expires you can still request new access token with the refresh token unless the refresh token has been invalidated also okay all right um okay well that makes sense. I think, I think this is good. I think I understand at a high level what's happening here. There's probably some tweaks that I need to make, obviously, um, with the regex and maybe some other things. But uh, this is good. I think my understanding is is a lot more solidified at this point. So that's great. Um, cool. So I guess in terms of next steps, um, I'll add you to this repository so we can start taking a look at it together. Here, let me switch back over here. So. Oops. Um, and how do I stop sharing? Oops, that's not it. That's my camera. And I lost my, I, I, I hid my little share button. So I'm trying to, is this what happens to you? If you hide your share button, you can't like stop sharing. <laughs> Let me reshare and then stop sharing. I don't know if that helped. Yeah, I can see you now. Okay, um, cool. Um, so yeah, I'll add you to it, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I should be able to, to, to hopefully fix that that regex stuff and figure out what's going on there. Um, it's good to know, uh, maybe, I mean, there's, so basically we're replacing spaces with hyphens and um, forward slashes with underscores. Is that, if you remember correctly? I remember that, that it was so, yeah. Okay, um, so I can probably do that. And then, um, yeah, it'd be cool if I could add you to that so we can start making some of the tweaks. I think working off, this repository be helpful um, uh, from my perspective, just enable mm -hmm. to to make this stuff working with plenty and we can find those bugs pretty quickly. Um, yep. If you run into things, which you probably will, like uh, like template strings or query parameters or things that just aren't working like you would expect, let me know because there might be bugs that we can just fix because I've, I've already run into a couple of those. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, it'd be great if we could start kind of like working off that base um, yeah. just, just to get things going. Um, and then uh, I know at some point uh, this authentication looks like we're pretty close on that, which is awesome, uh, having it in plenty. Uh, I know you're starting to think about maybe um, what the 
the next steps would be in terms of like getting a right back to GitLab. So mm -hmm. we'll keep, we'll continue working on that stuff. Let me share my screen one last time. I did find, um, and this is kind of getting ahead of ourselves. I don't think we have to worry about this now, but I found an interesting project that maybe you've already stumbled across um, and looking at rich text editors. Have you come across typewriter at all? Have you seen this? Typewriter. Uh, yeah, I have, I have seen a quill, uh, use kill. Quill, okay. But so, I haven't used typewriter. Yeah. So it's like, I think it's a, a similar idea to quill. Um, and I know there's obviously prose mirror. Uh, there's, a, there's a ton of things um, that we could use. CK editor, tiny uh, MCE. Uh, typewriter looks pretty interesting. So typewriter is um, meant to be used uh, with Svelte is my understanding. Um, mm. And, and uh, the author had a lot of uh, great information written up here about why you might use it and some of the, the thoughts behind it and how it compares to some of these other editors. Uh, I, I thought it was interesting. So this might be something to look into at some point. Um, I don't know if that's super important at this moment. Uh, I don't know if we're at the content editing experience yet. I think we're more at kind of the mechanic stage still, but this is just something I want to throw your way in case you want to look at it at some point. Um, yeah. The thing I'm um, worried about is if it can be extended easily. Yeah, that's a, that's a good many, point. Many text editors or rich text editors are not really used for page laying. Yep, yep. It's uh, just I, for articles and... Yeah, that, that's a good point. So Like single like text content. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I and I don't know the answer there. It, from the brief reading I did, it sounds like it's meant to be more of a toolkit for building editors than a mm. fully functioning editor, which I think would be the right direction. But of course, um, it will take some research. So I just want to put it on your radar um, as something that might be worth looking into. But, yeah, it sounds interesting. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah, if um, at some point, and I don't know if we're there yet, but at the point where either you or I look into it more, if it becomes mm. apparent that it's not going to work for us, that's fine. I just want to throw it out there as something that might be um, a potential to use. Yeah. But yeah, cool. All right, I'm going to kill the recording unless there's anything else that you want to discuss on this. Yeah, there's nothing. <laughs> okay. Yeah.